you know any kind any form of artist or like art like they kind of really they get fascinated with like the complete opposite it's funny yeah. like i nerd out over him and like comedians yeah majorly like something that you're not involved in so you can appreciate it from afar right 100 percent, dude one one of the worst things about being in a band and uh, playing music is you you lose your innocent ear use emg pickups because they help you get the heaviest tone possible head over to emgpickups.com and use my promo code heavy at checkout and get 15 percent off and then once you write the heaviest song of all time head over to distrokid dot com slash vip slash garza and save 30 percent off your membership to get all your songs on all streaming platforms and now to the heaviest podcast of all time are we live we're live we live on pay-per-view pay-per-view is pay-per-view still a thing so yeah yeah what what do you like the ufc fights do they do. They have like their own app. Oh yeah. Are they ESPN or no? Right. It's, it's ESPN, so right? They ha- so they have the fight nights that are on ESPN, and then they have like their own pay per view thing that they do through their app. Oh. And I think you can buy. I think they still do it the old school way, where you can buy each fight individually, but you can also like I think pay monthly and you get all of them. I see. You yeah. see, as the fight pass. Fight pass. That's what it's called. And then. If you're boxing, there's like all these random apps I keep seeing. Oh yeah, the zone. But it, it, but would that be considered pay per view? I don't know. Um, it has to be right. I mean, I technically, know. any anything that you're paying like I think a one time fee for is like pay per view. Yeah, it's just it's called something differently, huh? Oh, but mm-hmm. it's not the official PPV. Interesting. Oh, like, through like Directv or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cool, everyone. Thank you for listening and watching. Uh, we're going on tour. Cool. Oh, yeah. Be- be- before I forget the plug. <laughs> <laughs> Chaos and Carnage, man. Dude, fucking. I'm going to see a dying fetus. It's going to be sick as fuck. I don't even know what the dates are. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy lineup, man. There we go. Um, shout out to dying fetus. Born, born of Osiris. Aborted. Please help me say this band name. <laughs> Sanguisigabog. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Crown, yeah. Magnetar, and Slay Squad. What a great lineup insane lineup i'm pretty pumped love the variety on that you get like something for everybody it's all brutal yeah D- just different flavors of brutal right yeah new york it's going everywhere really in uh three and a half weeks so yeah if you're in new york vegas obviously southern california i've been wanting to play that that berkeley venue ufc uh uc theater i've been wanting to be there for a while oh yeah i heard about that it's a dope. sick band. I always see like bands that they're rowdy and go. I'm like, damn, I want to go there. Yeah, finally. Berkeley's a legendary uh, city for like hardcore and stuff too. So that's cool. Dude, look at that shit, dude. It's fucking sick. Damn, that's a nice room. Yeah. I like the layout. Well, that'd be sick. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing everybody. Yeah. Seeing uh to be a party. If you leave comments, thank you. Uh, seeing people in person, it's always nice, you know. Oh yeah, definitely. You got to come say hi. Say what's up. Damn. We'll, we'll party. We'll party. See Sterling in Vegas. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Shout out Sterling. Shout out, man. That's gonna be. What's like the perfect amount of bands to to see? I personally, I personally think it's four. Oh, like on a show. Yeah. What's like the Cause this is seven. Mm-hmm. Like, what's, what's like a good? I mean, like I think four bands is where you capture the most, like people's attention the the best. Yeah. So I feel like somewhere in between, whether it be the first two artists or whoever, mm-hmm. you know, there's always gonna be time in between where people are just showing up or they're like getting merch or you know what I mean. So there's definitely like, I always feel like the middle of the lineup usually gets the most love. Like smack dab in the middle are usually like good spots. It's actually the yeah, best slot when people are showing up and under stoked. Yeah, some people go to shows and leave early because they got to either work or True. you know I, I've done that. Yeah, I, I was like I got, I'm fucking tired. I'm going home. I feel like if you're like that. the third band, that's a pretty sick slot. I want to be in third slot. What the fuck, man? <laughs> that's that's how they should fucking make tours, man. I don't want I don't want the fucking that that slot. I want like the middle. That's you know that's how they do like uh <laughs> like comedy shows. They mm-hmm. put the headliner in the middle. 
like the yeah. headliner will be like mm-hmm. third, and there'll they'll be like two comedians before, and then two two comedians after. Yeah, it's like a lineup at like the comedy store. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like wow, you see all those names, and like, but the headliner always goes on early. Never, almost never will headline like actually go on last. Yeah, yeah. Comedy store is definitely a bucket list place that I want want to go to. I keep hearing stories about it, but I n- never been. It's a cool vibe there, man. Everything like the lighting's very dim. Uh, they used to, I don't know if they still do it. They have like a guy play a piano in the main room. Yeah. Before the comedians go on, it's just like a very. You definitely feel the history there. And you, you know. just saw Bill Burr. Yeah. You didn't even tell me, you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? It, it was last minute. I got like a text message like a couple hours before the show that there's like free guest list. Wow. Um, yeah. So I just went on a whim. It was at the Bourbon Room. It's like this new spot in Hollywood. And they're actually doing shows there too. So that's a new spot because when mm-hmm. I saw like the Bourbon Room, what, where the hell is that? It's like right, um, it's in the middle of Sunset, like. Like Hollywood and Sunset, like very oh, wow. much in the middle of Hollywood. So it's on Sunset, um, or like Hollywood. You know what? I could be wrong. It might be off Hollywood actually, but I know it's like urban room. It's deep in the middle of Hollywood. It was like right off one of the main roads. Yeah, like, I like going there, but man, it's being on Sunset. It's just fuck. It's, it's just, a lot. It's a lot. I know the mountain paper parking. Yeah, you pay twenty bucks for parking. That's unavoidable. You know. I think if you pay for parking, you should get a free drink. I know, right? <laughs> well, I got a free show, so I guess I can't complain. Damn, yeah, there, <laughs> there, there is that. It, you know, they still do the two drink minimum, but like, you know, you can get like two beers, and that'll be like what fifteen bucks or something. So, yeah. not a big deal. To me, Bill Burr is—he's the goat as far as comedy. He—he's my favorite comedian. Yeah, he's—he was up there, like. Um, it was cool because he was just trying out new material. So he was doing a lot of like crowd work, talking to people. It was fun. Damn. It was cool seeing him not do like his usual thing where it's like a whole bit. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. um, he was messing around a lot and it was cool to see like, as long as he's been doing it, he's still so good at like just being witty and quick, you know, like looking at someone in the crowd and then making a whole premise around that. Yeah. You know, that must've been so cool seeing that man. Yeah. And it was a small room, you know, like even better, like 50 seats, probably. Damn. Very, very small room. You got lucky, dude. That's fucking sick. Yeah, that was that was so random because I I get like uh, text messages pretty often for like free shows. But that was the biggest lineup I've gotten hooked up on. Wow. Yeah. See, it shows. Go. Just be nice, people. (laughs) <laughs> Talk to people. They might add you to their, uh, oh my you know, goodness. their mailing list thing where they give away tickets. Yeah, and, and he tends he talks about metal a lot. I remember listening to his podcast, and he's like talking yeah. about like Meshuggah. Meshuggah. I'm like, whoa, dude, holy shit. Yeah. So he, he's a drummer, and his drum teacher is the current drummer from the Mars Volta. So you know he's not like he's insane. Like, damn, dude. Yeah, but he he's a big uh, metal guy now because that dude from Mars Volta has taken him to a bunch of shows. Wow, yeah, it's it's weird. I that's two worlds that I never saw combining in the way that it did with Bill Burr, because he's such a like mainstream like big act. Yeah, is he? Oh, is he talking about Meshuggah here? Oh yeah, are you serious? Oh yeah, right, let me th- fucking... this video is pretty funny. Jeremy, he, he this guy that works for me put up a video. Show him the video. And it has like over a hundred thousand views. What is it? <laughs> That's Bill Burr doing the bleed rhythm. Okay, you gotta stop it. Stop it. <laughs> All right, so what I was doing... Dude, the internet is amazing. <laughs> so what I was doing was I was I was talking about the drummer in... Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. I just that that uh, that's called, Metallica, Meshuga, Meshuga. So that song is called Bleed. It's about a, a brain hemorrhage, and I was just talking about. Um, I love that a heavy metal band called themselves Meshuga. For those that don't that's know, that's sick, dude. Yiddish, crazy. That's crazy. That's so fucking cool, man. And then Howie. Is. So yeah, they probably go into like a whole a whole thing about like the meaning of the band and like all that kind of stuff. Cause he he uh, he went to see them live too. He yeah, I think went. he was talking about the uh, yeah Will turn mm-hmm. if I'm yeah I'm correct he, yeah he was there and that's that's where that little sound bit came from because he was like imitating like uh, how Thomas Hawk's bass drum sounded. Oh my goodness, dude! 
It's just weird that like a comedian, like a mainstream comedian, gets super nerdy about metal. Like a lot of how like the average metal listener does. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, any kind, any form of artist or like art, like they kind of really they get fascinated with like the complete opposite. It's funny. Yeah. I, I nerd out over him and like comedians. Yeah. Majorly. Like I live, I listen to Bill Burr, or, like Rogan or always, mm-hmm. uh, Chappelle. I'll be like, whoa. Holy shit, dude! What, like, what, like? I'm also you just like trip out over mm. it, and then they probably you know, listen to music because it's something that you're not involved in, so you can appreciate it from afar, right? One hundred percent, dude. One one of the worst things about being in a band and uh, playing music is you you lose your innocent ear, mm. and it's the worst. And you're or if no matter what band you see, new yeah. song or record you're listening to, you just fucking you're just going to like this analyzing mode. Every time you have a band sucks. lens, no matter what. Yes, it sucks, man. You you That's can't crazy. just you can't just go to a show just like be like, whoa, just enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So I'll go to, I'll go to see comedians, and it's, there's just no filter. It's just like right. I'm just an idiot, just being just truly appreciating, and enjoying it. You know that must be like you know going to a metal show for the first time and watching a guitarist shred or something. Oh, dude, I can't imagine. And you've I, never seen wow. that before, you know. That's only, I've only, now that just hit me right now. Holy shit. That only happened to me once in my life. That's like the first time I saw corn. There's oh, no, yeah. there's no, there's nothing. You see your mm-hmm. band for the first time and like you just get hit and you're like, wow. For me, that was a system of a down. Dude. Yeah. I saw them at Long Beach Arena and just hearing like, like, like you said, just that sound for the first time in person. Yeah. It's, it's like a different thing. It's different, huh? Yeah. You remember that always. I mean, yeah, part of you with like. Like videos, you probably look. I look at videos. You kind of oh, they they probably edited it with this, and they probably put it through this this filter, and you know it sucks. I huh? can't just watch a music video. See, it sucks, huh? It's impossible. Gosh, yeah. I'm thinking about the lens they use and the rig, and <laughs> <laughs> even movies. Even movies. Oh, that you know, sometimes. sucks. I didn't think about that. Not all. If it's a good movie, I can still kind of get immersed into it. Yeah. But you know what sucks is when they use effects. That's when I start getting distracted because I'm like, what? What plugin did they use? <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness, <laughs> dude, that sucks. Yeah, I mean, for you or anyone that works in that in that world, yeah, you can't see movies the same, and that sucks. No, because like when you go to a movie theater, that's such a crazy. You think the movie theater is dead, but you get your mind. You literally get your mind at the moment you're in there and sit there. Oh, this is why I'm still here. Yeah, a movie theater is so sick. Yeah, I mean, you can't watch a movie yeah. in a theater with that with, uh, with, with that innocent. Kind of sucks. I try to like force my brain into a different, into a more innocent, you <laughs> yeah. know. Stop. Sometimes it works. You know how mm-hmm. it is. Like if you, if you if you want to feel that way enough and you want to enjoy it, you'll kind of find a way to get yourself in that innocent mind space again. Yeah, that's the thing. It can only happen once. It sucks, man. In that way. It, yeah. yeah. You can kind of like force yourself sometimes. You do got to force yourself. It's funny, like, uh, it's like that with, with, uh, there's something special when you do something for the first time, like uh, mm-hmm. like for bands, it's like recording a record. Mm-hmm. It's kind of why the records sound that way when they're so early on in their career. Like it's something about not knowing what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, and it's doing it. You can only do it once or twice. That is true. You know, it's like when you shit. listen to a band's first demo, mm-hmm. you you it's it's different. It's different. Dude. And then as soon as they get signed and they go into the studio, it's just it's recorded differently. It's not the same kind of sound. I know this. I mean, I try to do it. I try to go into something like new and like, oh, this is like, well, I'll, or let's, mm. or let someone else have an idea like I don't really know about. Kind of, I, all I'm doing, I'm trying to go back to like that, like I don't, I don't know what I'm doing phase, the innocent phase, yeah, because like, like, you don't know what's gonna happen. You're trying to get that that magic, you know, especially with heavy music, right? Especially with heavy music, especially that's like that's the genre where it's you know it's kind of hard to innovate when you know there's so many. There's only so many ways you can play a low end mm-hmm. note. So you do kind of yeah. have to just like win, like sometimes just try things that you never thought of. Totally. I mean, yeah, a lot of it is just here's to write one good riff is like you have like a hundred, like whatever ones. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, uh, it's just, you're just going and going. Yeah. And that's what's fascinating about writing a sick riff. It's like, as you just said, it's kind of like, one of like the the hardest things to do. It's mm. you know how many times you do this with like, you know like, <laughs> with playing play, playing it like a certain way and like well yeah. Because I'm I'm trying not to get woo woo and spiritual. <laughs> no, let's do it. But yeah, those uh yeah those riffs are come like those patterns tend to come from you inside. 
Mm -hmm. It tends to be like very like from from within. So kind of how it's why some of those riffs stick. So yeah. you know, where, where, where that timing come from? Where did that? How do they do that again? But but it's yeah. slightly different because it's like it comes from within. You know. That that brings me like kind of a question that comedians do. Like I'm curious if you ever do. Do you ever like hum? Like a riff, like you have an, a, a riff idea, and you're like, okay, I don't want to lose this. So you pull out your phone, you like just record audio, humming all the time. a riff, all the time. Because you know comedians do that with jokes. Yeah, it's like the same kind of thing. Yeah, you're trying to catch uh, lightning in, in a bottle. Yeah, you know, it's like get the idea down. Which I mean, I always I say this a lot when I'm talking to anybody about like if you get any idea for anything, as far even if you're talking like music or art or video or idea just put, put it down put it down in your notes or yeah. hum it or say it like because your brain always like it it fucking pisses me off but it's it never goes away it's like oh you, you don't need, you don't need to put it put it down you don't yeah you, oh you'll you'll remember that idea you'll remember that riff but you never ever do and you your can brain, get it close oh. you'll get super close but it'll never be the exact same thought that you had in that moment isn't it weird how like there's like thoughts that can get like partially lost. Not it's not like you completely forgot, mm -hmm. but it's different enough to where it'll piss you off. You of know? course, yeah, yeah. Probably lost another unanswered. So, oh, 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 that's so simple. <laughs> I, I could definitely remember that I'll one. Oh, yeah, I'll remember how to play that. It's like wake up. Nope, it's gone oh, forever. Man. It's gone forever. Forever. You can never get that idea back. And especially those me off. like genius like mid sleep thoughts. You know, mm -hmm. when you're in that weird like a uh, REM sleep. Yeah, you know, you're you're in a different place in your brain when you're coming up with those ideas. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's like one of my weaknesses as a writer because I try to like be like, okay, you wake up, or you for whatever reason, like at three a.m. I'm like, oh, she for some reason you wake up and you have like, an idea. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? I'm just lazy. I'm gonna remember it when I wake up. Never do. You, no. you never do. So I, I try to get up and like either play it or I'll hum it and then mm -hmm. go back to bed. Yeah, but like I. You are tested so much in that moment because it's like, shit, I mean, you're so lazy, you're so tired, and yeah. you need to wake up early the next day because you, you have a video shoot or you're going to work or yeah. or, or or what have you, but I'm trying to work on it. I am trying to work on that, like, you know, either, yeah. either get the fuck up and play it or just hum it and then, and then go back to bed because you will forget it. You always forget it. It's just one of those things, like... You, you even though it sucks because it always happens at any uh, inconvenient time, like you got to do it. It's like going to the gym. It's yeah, like, you know, it's like just one of those things. Like it's never like, oh, I'm excited. Like this is gonna be amazing. Like, but you just you you got to get it down because it's just one of those things that that you're gonna thank yourself later for doing. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, you're right. It's like going to the gym. Never really gets easier. You're just like, mm -hmm. oh, I was fucking. I gotta do this. I'll wake up this time and I'll. Just do this and got to grind it out. And never gets easier. I've been playing guitar since I was, fuck, I don't know, almost 25 years. And still. Yeah. Is it, I, I would argue it's even harder. I would argue because when mm -hmm. you're self-aware of something or you're conscious of it, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, this is a problem. This is an issue. But when you try yeah. to work towards the issue or fix it, it's like, oh, wow, this is really difficult. It's also harder, right, because as you get older, you gain knowledge. And mm -hmm. being self-aware can sometimes make things more difficult because oh, you're, yeah. you know, it's in your head more. Like, totally. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with that. Um, I try not to get into self-help stuff when I when we do this, but it just comes out. I'll, I'll, I'll do like a really quick, quick story. This was actually yesterday. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think we're an official podcast. We got Wi-Fi here officially. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, official. so Jay has literally, what's it called, Fiber? Yeah, fiber, fiber optics. Yeah, we got some yeah. quick, quick Wi-Fi. Um, so he's the pull it up king now. I had to, something happened where the signal was not what they expected, so they had to come here multiple times. So I came here Monday and Tuesday, and it was pouring rain. Oh man! There's a difference between rain and drizzle and heavy rain. This was heavy rain, yeah. and uh, driving on the freeway, I'm like, I cannot like see. And Scary. I have very good eyesight. That's one thing that I was, God blessed me with. It's like, oh, you have great, damn near perfect vision. Yeah. So if I'm struggling to see, I'm like, I get really sketched out on the freeway. I'm like, imagine everybody else. It's like, this is literally, I mean, you're driving like, and then there's trucks I, I, I both uh, side. I'm like, and you can't see anything. I'm, I'm just like, oh. whoa, dude, this is scary. But the thing about that and why I bring it up 
is that uh, you got to do certain things to be self-aware. You know, yeah. I mean, for for me, I'm, I'm going to wrap wrap this up now. But I mean, for me, you gotta I got to read books. I got to meditate, go to the gym. It puts you in, in that mind, that, that self-aware mm-hmm. uh, mind uh mindset and and it just makes you you yeah you know, you, 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 it's where it's going on yeah. and you know i mean i skipped the gym i didn't meditate i barely read um just because I, I had to come here early actually to, to, to meet uh to meet the uh technician right just in 48 hours i was like not not myself like i couldn't like yeah. things just don't click I, mm. ideas don't click i'm like damn it's so I mean I relate that to people that are driving, that they don't know anything. Right. They're just fucking driving. They're that they're in that like other flow state. You know they're on like a just yeah going through the fucking emotion and river. I'm like damn, it's it's scary. You do man. autopilot when you drive, especially far drives. You oh, will dude, your brain will kind of it'll it'll shut off into that autopilot mode where like you're only like you're not really like self aware. You're just kind of going. I know, dude. It's yeah. it's scary how quick it happens, dude. Mm-hmm. It's it's really scary and uh. Yeah, it just never gets easier. You just gotta do what we gotta do. Yeah, you know, I think I think it's something that we all have in common. We're just doing what we gotta do. Yes, make it happen. Try to enjoy the things you can enjoy in the process. You know, find a way to make it you know enjoyable. Yeah, god damn it, dude, you gotta fucking go to the gym. It sucks. <laughs> and I'm also short and uh, not the strongest, so you gotta. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I mean, it's just something about it, man. You're fucking, it's, it will increase a discipline, which will, you know, it ties everything together. Okay, when you yeah. wake up at fucking 4 a.m., I could, you know, track this riff real quick. Just yeah. Not be a lazy piece of shit. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not successful. That's one of my weaknesses. But good news is, I mean, there's always some something to work on. Always, man. You know? Yeah. Y- you could always uh, improve your craft. And then, and, then, and, and then you involve with improving your craft. It's fucking mm-hmm. it's fascinating. I'm trying not to talk for hours about this shit. Oh, no, it's very true, though. Because <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, anybody, e- even people at the top of the gauntlet can always improve. You know what I mean? Like, Dude, and what's even crazier about that, you could improve on the most basic thing. Like, for me, it's, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm in this band that's known as for simple wrist, but you could practice the same thing throughout your whole life and still improve yep. it. Like for me, it's like down picking. Yeah. I like down picking and doing the trim low and the mm-hmm. fucking joint, joint, and, what, like, and, what, and what have you. But like, yeah. like damn, uh, the longer I practice that, it gets better. And, oh, it, for and sure. it, just, it doesn't stop either. Yeah. It's I've, so nuts. There, there's a concept I've always thought, like there's something I think that's better than perfect. You know what I mean? There's perfection and then there's like second nature. It's like beyond. Yeah. You know, where it's like, it's just you. It's a group, like, you you know, like in music, they call it just like a like a pocket where you get into that deep, deep pocket and you just, like, understand the music on a deeper level. I think so, too. Yeah. It's not about technical ability. It's it's a feeling thing. Like It is, yeah. You know. And I notice the more you practice, some people don't like, especially guitar players don't like when I say this, but uh, you could make the strings do what you're trying to make them do more. Yeah. The more you practice. And yeah. Just, just the same, the same skill. Yeah, just, I'm just doing. I'm playing either Ramones or Slipknot or some or some Metallica songs because they're really hard to play with down picking stuff. I'll oh just yeah, do Metallica that for, for sure. hours, hours. It's fucking and like it still improves. It doesn't just stop. Oh, this is how good you are. Yeah, it's like this. You just keep getting better. I'm like, oh, you, you, I could like do more with the strings more. Yeah. And you know, am I going to choke it like, or am I going to make it like, like you get like kind of make the strings kind of breathe more. It's, it's like being comfortable more than anything too, else, yeah. right? Like, like that being too. comfortable with your instrument. Yeah, too. And also, uh, this is not for everybody. And it's not for everybody. But for me, I kind of noticed that like when you're drinking or you smoke, you go to where you are as far as your skill level. Yeah, uh, so, that's true. For, so for so for guitar playing, I'm, I notice if I, I'm if I'm practicing a lot, like 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 a lot, and I start drinking, if I get a little buzz, if I'm drunk or something like, that skill is still there. It's, right. like, it's like boom 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 boom. Like you're not really thinking. It's just it doesn't just, go away. It's yeah. just boom there. Mm-hmm. I notice like I'm not practicing as much as I used to. Mm-hmm. Or drinking. Oh, it's not like something's missing. Right. So yeah, I guess uh, I'm just trying to get obsessed with making that shit always be there. 
I guess finding the right formula, right? Mm -hmm. To where it's like you're enjoying it and you're improving, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, ultimately you want to just like go up on stage and just love it. Like you want to totally. like have the best experience possible. Totally. I think that's what Dimebag did. Like he was known, the, work, the, the, the rumors are he just played all the time. He had a guitar mm -hmm. in his bathroom. Oh yeah, that's those, <laughs> like those are those are the rumors, and it makes sense. But also the other rumors is he got hammered before he started playing. Also makes sense. But if, <laughs> it makes sense because if you're always practicing, like if you get drunk, your your skill is still insane. Because then you're kind of just autopiloting, right? You're you're, you're <laughs> just still letting right. it, you're, you're just still letting right it roll, right? Yeah. There is something about that, like when I've seen you know uh, artists perform and they're a little buzzed or whatever it might be, like. It is interesting to see them kind of go in, like, I like that word you use, a uh, flow state. Mm -hmm. You see them go into this, like, yep. it's just their natural consciousness coming out. Um, it's not forced. It's not like them trying to even have a persona or anything. It's just their natural totally. state of being, which is pretty cool. It's fucking badass, dude. Yeah, that's just what we're trying to do, trying to get, get that flow state. Yeah. And whether you do that sober or... Sure. You know, or buzz or whatever it might be. That's cool. Either way. Yep. For me personally, it's uh, getting kind of drunk. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> cheers to that. Yeah, cheers, cheers <laughs> to that. Cheers to Heineken. Oh, yeah. Cheers to these. Uh, Dosecki's Heineken, man. Dosecki's. Uh, shout out to, uh, to Michael. I met him at the Zoom show. We are now partnered with Dosecki's, Heineken, and Ducate. Nice. Pretty sick. Great dude. Cheers, man. Amazing. Yeah, cheers. Fucking cheers. badass, dude. Cheers to everybody at home. Boom, cheers, boom. guys. Heck yeah. So it's uh it's Thursday. Now, what are your plans this weekend? Um, let me see. I have a shoot on Saturday. Cool. Um no plans for the rest of the weekend. Nice. See what I get into. Nice. Yeah, what about you? Uh Sunday I have going archery shooting for the first time. Oh, sick. Sick. That sounds fun. So yeah, my uh my lady likes to do that, so uh my I learned that I'm I'm just saying yes to everything. You mm -hmm. know, just say well, not everything, but you know, yeah, uh, just saying <laughs> not 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 everything. Not, <laughs> Take your shirt off. Okay. Everything, huh? Not to docking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's dock our dicks right now. <laughs> it's it's all about connection, guys. I'll try anything once, bro. It's all about connection. Don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, archer shooting. Uh, dude, that's fun. I've done that a couple stoked, times. Man. I'm, I'm gonna be there, dude. I'm gonna know how to kill basically by by Sunday. I'm not going to lie, man. Yeah. <laughs> it is kind of, it's kind of crazy the amount of power that like a, an arrow has when you shoot it. Yeah. You really feel it. Like it's like this gust of wind. Like it's pretty nuts. It looks fun, dude. It's a good time. And then when you nail a bullseye, it's like the most satisfying feeling. Dude, I'm probably going to get there and just kill it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm basically going to, yeah, I'm basically going to train killer. This <laughs> is 48 hours. Oh yeah, you're just gonna like, pull up with uh with bu with bow and arrow from now on. Yeah, you're gonna mm -hmm. pull up. Yeah, that's how you're gonna roll. Just carry it, like you know when you're a kid and you have the guitar. You're the kid with yeah. the guitar. Like, you're gonna be like Link from Zelda. Mm -hmm. Just got the the bow and arrows on you. Sick. So yeah, doing that. Uh, some boring stuff. Scheduling future. Because nice. uh, so obviously this if you're, <laughs> this there's, this is coming out obviously, and then yeah. we're, we're gonna do one more episode with with us. And then starting uh, that when that's when shows are going to be in town. Oh yeah. So uh, we mm -hmm. got our next guest would be uh, Carcosa. Oh yeah. That you guys are sick. That'll be sick. And then Torn will officially start in that. I Can't forgot. Wait. I forgot how many emails I sent out. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, Torn's going to start um, yesterday. There, there's a reason why we don't announce guests because sometimes they postpone or they cancel. Mm -hmm. It's just pretty common. But hopefully this happens. But we're going to have our first fly in. Band guest. Oh, I'm and, excited. And that's going to be in February. And you guys are all going to shit. Guys and ladies will shit their pants. You guys aren't ready for this one. It's oh, huge. My, oh, my goodness. I'm fucking stoked. It's a big one. First, first fly in. First, it's I mean, be like. Legendary, too. Like, obviously, we, we, we say, you know, this is the heaviest podcast of all time. It was like a lighthearted joke, mm -hmm. but yeah, kind of serious at the same time. But this is, if they, if they're on this, this is probably going to, it's going to make it official. I mean, that will literally be the happiest episode, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Probably of all time. Yeah. Holy shit. So, yeah, uh, we'll do, let's do more scheduling, uh, archer shooting, obviously, and then, uh, yeah. Sick. 
that's pretty much it. Sounds like fun. The days fly by, dude. Holy shit. Yeah, I know. It it is so far this year is yeah. Well, like we're already it's just, <laughs> it's just it's just flying, dude. Yeah. So yeah, next week we'll, we'll have fun doing this, and then it's we're gonna be going to a lot of shows. Shows are happening quick. Quick, dude. Yeah. All right, Jay. What, what do we have here, man? <clears throat> we got well, some new news. Yes. Yeah, so we've got uh, Loudwire just released the 50 best new metal albums of all time. And I just nice. wanted oh, to see if you guys agree, disagree. What would your personal choices be? Let's this is gonna take out. two hours to go go through. <laughs> this is literally my subject. Each one we're gonna have to this argue whether it's it's the top. Yeah. We're, so we're gonna try to bust through this. It's so gonna be a good forty minutes probably. All right, All right yeah. let's go. Here we go. Uh, you know, new metal had a firm grip on uh, on music for like ten years, right? Like. Would you say ninety four to oh four? Pretty much, yeah. You could, you could argue still it's stronger now than I mean, ever. Yeah, you know? for sure. It, yeah, now it's had a resurgence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, combining elements of metal, electronic, funk, hip hop, of course, was like a huge aesthetic of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's I mean, list, um, dude. I'm definitely a child of that time. Same. Uh, <clears throat> so coming in at number fifty is Crazy Town's "The Gift of the Game." That came out at ninety nine. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow, that's crazy. It's right? definitely from that era. Do you guys want to go to number one? You want to see what oh, number one is? Wow. Not or what, not, no, yet, no, not yet. Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 yeah, let, let's, let's scroll through. Let's these. not blow yeah. our lids yet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's kind of uh, skim through it. The guy's going to flip the table like, oh, fuck you guys. <laughs> Hell this, no. This is not new metal. <laughs> posers, you're all posers. <laughs> it's going to be like Billie Eilish. No, I'm kidding. Diane, that would be... I mean... Dude, no, okay, so this record, n- number 48, uh, Happy E Broke, Happy. came out in year 2000. If you're yeah. not familiar with Happy E... Or at least his record broke. It is amazing. Mm-hmm. The bartender, one. dude. That song is fucking sick, dude. It, this is a bre- bedroom mosh album for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, what's you? Uh, I think I have a song called uh, "Killing Time." Yeah, "Killing Time," right? Mm-hmm. P.E. Head she, P.E. That band was sick. That. So yeah, they that belongs there for yeah, sure. It's it's I remember going. like bros with with the hats. Weren't uh, lifted truck, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, lifted truck band for no sure. Point. Yeah, right. Round point, the, primer fifty five. Okay, so this one, so forty five taproot. taproot gift came out in two thousand. Good one. That's a great one. Cool. Taproot. Taproot's classic. They were drop a saliva. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. come on, dude, saliva. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Yeah, sure." Yeah, it's, yeah. it's there. Power Man five thousand. Power Man five thousand. Yeah, how many video games was this band in? Like, Dude, that they, <laughs> that one song, right? When Worlds Collide? Yeah. That game, Heavy. that song was in like three different video games, I think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's also a good record. I I, um, I bought that record for sure. Mm-hmm. To not yeah. the stars people. Definitely, uh, what was it? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Yeah. They gotta give those guys on the podcast, dude. Oh, this record's 42 oh, yeah. Spine Shank, The Height of Calisthenics. Spine Shank. Like, you just, when you see a list like this, you're like, all, all these records came out in 99, 2000. I'm like, yeah. there, there's <laughs> crazy. so much great music, man. Yeah, yeah. Was, 99 to like 2002 had so many good albums. Yeah. And so like just original, just like. It's like, all, yeah, every band had their own sound there too. There's no genre. They didn't, I don't think they were aware that there was a genre. They were just doing stuff. No, they didn't even call it new metal until yeah. after the new metal wave happened, basically. The media pretty much started, called it new, yeah. new metal. Yeah. No, that goes. Because all these bands are Death so core, different. Deathcore, same thing. You're called yeah. Deathcore. <laughs> You're like, yeah. wait, everyone's what? Gonna, everyone's going to rip it off and not give you any credit. <laughs> You're like, I was just mixing. <laughs> like, I was just mixing slam with new metal. I didn't know there was a name uh, for it. <laughs> what do you think about 40? 40 is good. Oh, yeah. Corn yeah. Untouchable is great. Great record. They went pretty spacey, which is mm-hmm. I always appreciate. Mm-hmm. I like how they experimented on this one for sure. Yeah, bands like that. Um, I'm not gonna. I don't. I'm trying not to compare myself to them or put myself in the same na- like sentence. But when you're kind of like in that position, it's really tough because everyone starts to rip you off, and you kind of like have yeah. to. Yeah, you have to do something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be accused of ripping off your own sound that you started. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. No, I get it. Mm-hmm. I'll go, totally get it. go back up, Jay. Mm-hmm. Go back up. So 38. Machine Head, The Burn Your Red. That that's a sick record, dude. That is if, a really if, good one. If you listen to that record, um, there's hits mm-hmm. from this day, dude. Oh, yeah. Come on, dude. Come on. Sick. Shout out. Banger. They actually uh, played that for my birthday. Oh really? really? Yeah, we're we're, wow. we're on tour with them. I turned. I forgot what I was. I wow. I don't even know. <laughs> Twenty three or something. That was and they, that's a sick birthday gift. Oh, that's yeah. a sick. That's a sick gift. Yeah. 
Dude, that's awesome. So shout out to Rob and I Machine Head. Great, great record. I'm glad to see him actually playing songs from that record. So. Machine Head, very influential band, mm -hmm. for sure. Like, yeah. yeah. Rob Flynn. They, they were never really... I wasn't. I like that record, but I wasn't like inspired by them. It was just like it's. It's a. I just love yeah. that one song. Yeah, you know. No. Mm. But but that band in general, for sure, is like yeah. influenced a lot of people. A lot of bands are, are inspired by it, mm -hmm. by them. Thirty six orgy, orgy candy ass ninety eight. Oh, <laughs> Dude, that was. Uh, Dude, orgy. I mean, that Blue Monday cover was pretty much. Great. Yeah. The thing about orgy is that, and I'm, in real time, literally right now, I've been doing some research on orgy the past week, and they're, they're tied in deeply to this genre in a way what is funny because the next one actually ties into that record um, okay well uh, go ahead i was gonna say something about them too yeah they're like there's something there's i don't know like some guys are from bakersfield that were hanging out with the corn guys do you know about the queen of the damn thing like jay gordon and yeah because he worked on the whole soundtrack with jonathan yeah. mm -hmm. which is it's insane like mm. So I'm talking pre new metal. Like, like yeah. this is so okay. Oh, so, so even before that. Yeah. So uh, so, go down, mm -hmm. and th thirty five is, oh my gosh, what a record! Mm -hmm. Cold Chamber self titled ninety seven. If you look at the credits on the first Cold Chamber record, there's names of orgy guys. In the credits. Oh wow! I'm like, I'm like I I don't. I don't want to put my words in someone else's mouth, but I'm like, there's something about Orgy that's deeply tied to the genre. I'm currently trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Is it Jay that kind of bridged that gap? Because I know he knew a lot of Composer. those guys. Jay Baumgartner? Baumgartner? Let's see. Well, he... th there's always Wiki. Yeah. Yeah. See there, um, <clears throat> Alien Ant Farm, POD. I don't yeah. think... Uh... Uh, wait, who? Oh, wait, let's go a little bit back toward that era. I'm not sure who that is. 1997, damn. I'm not sure who, who that is. Batman and Robin. No, I'm just <laughs> no go. Uh, okay, let's go back. Well, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, yeah, so Amir. Amir? Okay. Engineering mixing. Oh. So he, he's a. Uh, <clears throat> Amir's an orgy. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? Like, what is that? There's a connection. Yeah. Jake, comment. That's interesting. Um, someone else is involved with that. Watch. Go. Go to the Wikipedia. Orgy band wiki. So I'm just funny. Funny thing about this record. My parents wouldn't let me buy this record because it, it said, said orgy. Orgy <laughs> and candy ass. <laughs> like that's it's, probably yeah. That's uh, not for kids. In time, they just let me, because I got it into brutal tap, and I'm like, well, I guess he could. I mean, yeah. Yeah, Jake, look up the uh, first Cold Chamber. Look up that record. Be uh, a, be a wiki. There we go. Boom. Cool. Down, down, down. Personnel. Let's go. There's Jay. Oh wait. Yeah. See, J, J oh, Gordon, oh, boom. Yeah. yeah, J Gordon. Oh, I see. See, so he, yeah, he's the, I think he's the guy that bridged a lot of gaps. Oh, yeah. Singer of Orgy. Oh, well, yeah. Go back, Jay. Oh, shit. What did I do? Um, production. What else is on there? I, production and mixing, additional vocals on Oddity. Oddity's fuck. That what a sick fucking. Julian K. Dead by Sunrise. And one of the dudes from Orgy was also, I think he was in Sex Art with John. He was, right? I think he was. I think, and I'm pretty sure that's how the whole Queen of the Damned thing happened, probably. If it was around that same time. Well, Queen of the Damned, when you're talking post-corn blowing up, that's like 2000 era. Well, type in, uh, when did, when did Queen, Queen of the Damned come out? Um, you, you're probably it right. I think it was like right after they blew up. That's probably like 99, like 2000, oh, 02, yeah. I mean, yeah, so it was after. I'm, I'm talking like 92. Mm -hmm. Like literally, yeah. I mean. You're, A whole decade before. Yeah, we're talking like, like <laughs> before all this. When they were like probably like growing up together as kids or whatever, or like teenagers. Go down, Jay. This is the cold chamber? Uh, yeah. Or orgy. Actually, go, go, to, go to orgy again. Boom. Go down, down. Uh, let's see. 
go to, go to band members or let's see. Just Ty, okay, uh, hit Ryan. Boom. Ryan, so Ryan, this guy's he's a fucking legend and no one ever talks about him. Ryan Shuck. Okay, so wait, wait, wait say 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 there. That's the rock sign robot just chunk. Ryan played in the Bakersfield based rock band Sex Art alongside future corn lead singer Jonathan Davis. Oh wow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm curious what that is. Yeah, I guess they must have grown I, up together. I, 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 I gotta get I gotta get Jane here. We I'm, gotta ask. I'm, yeah, I'm, we gotta I'm ask. Re- I'm really curious how this, all this thing. There's a deep. Connects. There's definitely a deep connection. Yeah. There's that Bakersfield yeah. just angst. I mean, it's a small, you know, kind of a small area. I bet everyone knows everyone out there. Yeah. So, all right. What's next? Anyways, l- listen. <laughs> uh, listen to First Cold Chamber. Listen to Candy Ass Orgy. It's sick as fuck. Both great records. Thirty Four Dragon Pool Center. It's sick as fuck. I mean, yeah. yeah. Come on. Bodies, bro. Come on. Yeah. Oh yeah, stained. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting to the yeah, stained ninety nine dysfunction, the it, most underrated heavy record of all time. If you guys don't know, stained has a super, super heavy album. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, it's like is crazy it this one? dysfunction. Yeah, that first record because they went to the radio after it. That first record is sick, dude. It's I was listening heavy. to it last week actually. Yeah, I, I, I listen all the time. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Soulfly, first Soulfly Soul ninety eight. That's a great record. So first uh, it was right after uh yeah, Sipatory did Roots in ninety six mm-hmm. and then uh whatever happened to Max and, and them. Right. And now now we have two sick bands. I know, two at two at once. <laughs> two fucking <laughs> it's two crazy epic heavy bands, Seven Dust, legendary. Yeah. So Seven Dust. Staple in staple in, in the genre and so many bands rip off Seven Dust, it is fucking it's insane. Again, yeah. Yeah. Again, They're, like all these bands are created so, the metalcore formula basically. Metalcore bands now gent. Dude, Seven Gent, Dust especially was like, Gent, yeah. Jesus, dude. That funk kind of like yep. disturbed. Disturbed, disturbed yeah. massive band, great guys. This is a little newer. I remember. I this. never really jammed that record. Ten Thousand Fists. It was a little more modern. I feel like compared I, to I that. saw them uh, like at Ozfest around when this album came out. This is when they were like big, big, like mm-hmm. you know, right when they blew up. Yeah. This one has that sick track, um, "Land of Confusion." Oh yeah, mm, yeah. It's a Genesis mm-hmm. Genesis mm-hmm. cover. But that's just genty. Yeah, that was cool. I like how they did that. It's like... Dun, 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 dun. It's like mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, dude, Dan Donegan has some sick chug patterns. Yeah. He does. Right? Yeah. Dude, like, I'm like, if he you does. listen to it, I'm like, dude, that's, that's, a, that's a sick fucking pattern, dude. It's Shout just, out to Dan Donegan, dude. It's just that their so, songs are super poppy and catchy that you don't realize that there's four, a lot going yeah. on. Yeah. It's like 4-4, four, four, but it's like... It's and they don't try to make dude. it complicated, which no. I think that's why people like Disturbed. Love that. It's simple and to the point. Like Just fucking give us something to bounce to. Dude, Dan Donegan is fucking sick and there's something about his playing style and like uh, uh david draymond's vocals they like play off of they each just other like, there's, uh, there's a connection there man yeah you can't you cannot deny it and obviously they they had they headline all these festivals so they did this, they did something right so yeah 100 yeah. <laughs> percent sick vocalist 29 seven dust animosity seven dust is a, a two-time champ on this list mm-hmm. here we just saw him play that record front to back, dude. Mm. Dude, it was good. Dude, it was sure. so good, man. Yeah. One of yeah. the best shows of last year, for sure. POD, Satellite. It's a good yeah. one. That had, that had hits on it. Yeah, a lot, it has yeah, a lot, a lot of hits. Like five or mm-hmm. something like that. A lot of hits. I keep going. Pretty POD sick, pretty awesome. sick. Oh, my goodness. Static 27. X. Wisconsin Death Trip. 99. Sick ass album yeah. title, too. Rest in peace, Wayne, dude. Rest in peace. Yeah, yeah, I was a big Static X fan for a long time. Like, I was... I got super into them. They have a new like anonymous frontman, right? It's kind of like the ghost. Yeah, of, he like yes. wears Wayne's yeah. uh, mask yeah. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. That's crazy. Wayne was he's an interesting guy, man. We did a one tour with them. It was it was the last time they uh they had the OG lineup. Oh wow! And we were mm-hmm. sharing. It's it was the first fucking show. Mm-hmm. It was like them, like Mudbane. Uh, we, we have we had we had the poster here. Yeah, it's it's uh, that's a sick lineup. Mm, it's a pretty sick, sick lineup. We're sharing a yeah. dressing room, and he walks in. And he goes, "You guys are fucking serious." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh shit, he fucking likes us. He, he's he's cool." It was like, and then didn't talk to us to, like the rest of the tour. <laughs> he just had to let you know, like no, like no one, like no one hung out with him really. It was yeah. weird. It's weird. That's what I heard. He was kind of like to himself, you know. He seemed really fucking cool, man. And goddamn, his vocals are sick, dude. He had his own, yeah, his own sound for sure. 
Yeah. Shout out Wayne, cool. dude. I, I met him once. He was really nice. Bunch really of really like cool. original original guys from that mm. era, dude. Like yeah, just doing their own thing. Well, we got adrenaline. Adrenaline ninety five. Nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I personally skipped the record. I'm I'm not sure why. I keep trying to go back, but it's a good one. It's it's I don't think it's their best, but I think mm. for them doing the new metal sound, there's some some bangers on there for Maybe sure. Heavy like stuff. They had that low eight to seven string eight string. It's stuff. it's a little more yeah. It's definitely a little more like metalcore than any of their mm. other stuff. Yeah, a little. As far less. as having like breakdowns and stuff, mm-hmm. it's one of their only Deftones records that has that. And get best signs twenty five amazing record. Is that new metal? Yeah, I think, I it's think, from I the era, but yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's new metal. It's weird. That's why new metal is kind of weird, right? Just, it, I think it's a very wide umbrella. Mm-hmm. 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 Now it's like I mean, it's like metalcore. Mm-hmm. There's like super poppy There's stuff. So that's many counted kinds. as metalcore. You know, There's like, so many kinds, man. It's yeah. Cool. Oh, there we go. Do this, Chocolate but, stuffish. I mean, it's classic. You can't go wrong. So twenty four Limp Bizkit. Chocolate mm-hmm. harvest and a hot dog of water. They uh, we're yeah. just at twenty four. I wonder what's gonna be number Damn. one. It's it's gonna get <laughs> yeah. So uh, so we're I'm sweating here. So okay. we're trying to fly by this because it's, take, it's taking a while. So okay, uh, bear, bear with us. Uh, twenty. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, okay, forty. Yeah, that's a good one too. My vein twenty three LD fifty heavy record. Mm-hmm. Chad's vocals are insane, dude. The bass, great guy. Crazy. Yeah. Let this get through. I build you all. Fantastic. <laughs> Keep going. The first P.O.D. 21, 99. Oh, that's okay. a great record, pretty too. Cool, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Papa Roach. I mean, huge. The They're best. Huge. Great. Hits. Amazing, man. Kid Rock. Okay, so <laughs> let's... Here we go. That's now a, we're going to yeah, do the controversy. One. So we need Woo. to let people know what the fuck is up with, with this one. So 19, Kid Rock, Devil Valley Cause. Huge record because anyone that combines things in such an extreme way brings in a whole new fan base yeah. to heavy shit. I agree. Mm-hmm. And Kid Rock did that, man. He did it. Um, qu- real quick about this record, their producer is named John Travis. He mm-hmm. produced The Cleansing. Wow. And no Crazy. one ever talks about it. Yeah. Sick. No one ever talks about it. But yeah, well, I don't even know why we agree with... But uh, yeah, John Travis, he, he produced that record. He did like... Sugar Ray or like this, yeah. It made it made no sense, on, right? On paper, it made no fucking sense. But that's why it came out the way it did. I think approaching it, he he would approach that in a different okay, way. Look at this nice. list. I'm not trying to talk myself up. <laughs> okay, no, it's real. John John Travis. His history includes work with such artists as Kid Rock, Social Distortion, Static X, Buck Cherry, Suicide Silence, No Doubt, Sugar Ray. That's a weird list to be a part of. That's an awesome list. Sick. And that's probably why the cleansing sounds the way it sounds because, you know, from a production standpoint, it was approached from like Fresh. mostly like a pop songwriting stand. Like he's going to yeah. approach it in a way different way than like a metal, traditional metal producer would approach it. Totally. You know? Yeah, no one. Sick. It's why Bansa came out after, after that record. They just don't have, they, they don't have a sound that mm-hmm. like, uh, where it's so them. Yeah, because I mean, you, you kind of have to go to like not like a metal producer. You get I mean, yeah, it, I think it's smart. It's really smart the way you guys did that. Their songs instead of just like heavy stuff, heavy sounds. They're like their songs. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's like super catchy from front to back. So, and SS has always been. We're not. Who? Oh, what are they doing? Who cares? We're going to do what, what we do. Exactly. And sometimes you know. Shit hits and it's a big success. Other times mm-hmm. you do a record and it flops and people think you're done and washed up. That, that, that's fine too. But that's the price of being a leader. Oh, when, yeah. You gotta take chances though. You, you gotta take risks. Yeah, and then no bands, risk. so bands yeah. after you could have a kind of like a, a road. Yeah. I mean, someone's gotta do it. You know? Someone's gotta <laughs> fucking do it, dude. If they're not gonna do it, I will. Fuck yeah. it, dude. You gotta be a gangster. You guys are brave for that and it, you know, it shows. Uh, I think people uh, will, will like the self titled in like 10 years from now. Around the fur now, now uh, viral on TikTok. So, is it why? J- just bu- there's so many memes and like little trends that have popped up with this wow. album. Well, Gen it's Z. a phenomenal record. It's, Gen yeah, Z it's discovering it. Yeah, Gen pretty much Gen Z discovered <laughs> around the fur. I fuck it. That's cool. Mesmerize. Great. I love that. I love that album. That's, that's around sick. the time I saw them live was when that album dropped. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. 
Six issues. point issues, 15, I mean, 99. Oh, the, the, the next 15 yeah. are going to be insane. All right. The next this 15, is the top this 15, is the cream so. of the crops. <laughs> it's got to be the best. All right. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not surprised this is not number one. Yeah. Me too. It, for me, I don't know. It's weird. Okay. Significant other 99 at number okay. 14. Has Nookie, Roland. Yeah. No, uh, only only Nookie. Nookie. Oh, yeah. not Roland. Oh, yeah. That's Chocolate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 My bad. Let's go to 13. Oh, this Subliminal. is. Subliminal. That's a good Damn, fucking album. <laughs> That's a great album. I'm not mad about that. Yeah. That was a beautiful album. This is yeah, yeah. this is records like that are what what you call like legit like art pieces and like yeah. it's, a, it's like a masterpiece. It's a start to finish. The way like it flows, yeah. like that, yeah. that 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 can never be touched. That's a no skip album. The disc. Remember the disc with like Oh yeah. Oh, it was just beautiful to look at. And and it exposed Slipknot to like a like such a diverse crowd of people. Like this is really the album that did it. Volume three, man. It's little. It's 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 a masterpiece. Yeah. What's the one of my favorites yeah. of all time? Kind of one of those things that will never be touched. It's like that's I would that. I argue it might be. It should be higher. Honestly. Yeah. I, I would put this way higher in the list. I would put this not on. Best, I put it top five. I would put it on best albums ever. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Totally. I I agree with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Super colorful and heavy at the same time. It's like beautiful, sh- as sh- as it is heavy. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah, well, oh, they won a Grammy for it before I forget. Oh, Chorus. that's right. I mean, that's that song is like one of the most well written rock songs. Period. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh, yeah, that's let's a good go, song. Uh, All right, let's go. Are you ready? Going. Mm-hmm. Make yourself make good. Yourself. Yeah, that's a great record. There you go. That's the one I listen to all the time when it comes to Incubus. It's beautiful. It's a great I mean, I'm a fan of Incubus for sure. Evanescence. I mean. If yeah. you're a fan of, of Evanescence, they're fucking sick. Dude. Evanescence, you can maybe argue, maybe at least helped create the mall goth genre. Like they they made that <laughs> whole thing. Like, and I don't even mean that in a negative way. Like I actually love a lot of bands Mal-Goth. that fall under mm-hmm. that genre. Shout out to Mall Goth. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Like dude. hot topic culture and stuff like that. Oh, like, yeah, 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 dude, yeah. Evanescence. Of Gotta course. give it to them. We're back to Disturbed. The sickness. The sickness. What if? <laughs> Phenomenal <laughs> record, dude. Yeah, I mean. Incredible. Down, down to the sick dance. I mean, you're talking like, how do you write a song like that? Damn. So good. Simple, right? But damn. Yeah. yeah. Just, I think it's a feeling. That that song is just like. I feel it right now. That's one of those songs that's going to be around, <laughs> you know, 50 years from now. Yeah, of course. People will know about this song still. Certified so. platinum five times. The sickness. You, hear, you guys heard it first. Certified wow. banger. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Number Follow nine. The Follow the leader. I'm curious what's top five because this is my number one. Okay, I was gonna say, can you speak to this one? Okay, right? so uh, go down a little bit. Let's see what this is. Most, That's the most successful. Obviously, Corn's most commercially successful yeah. record. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is what to me this is the most important and greatest new metal record of all time on the planet. It will never be touched. I agree. It came out in '98. I mean, Corn did so much for 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 the heavy scene, and it's mm-hmm. still happening. I yeah. mean, I mean, t- I mean, talk about like deathcore bands coming out, like taking new metal I- influences and adding singing to the songs and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, you're talking like, yeah, all that that video, dude. Yeah, we, we don't got to put a volume, but let's just let it play. Yeah, I was just gonna, yeah, just to get the visuals. <laughs> I was gonna have it while you were talking. Let's let, let's <laughs> get the visuals going while while I'm talking. Yeah. Oh my goodness, dude! When I saw this video as a kid, it literally changed my life. Literally, uh, wow, dude! That's Legendary LA, bridge too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're Bridges talking about a band. Still, a really tune the A, low tuning, <laughs> seven strings, and then like the LA culture that's associated with. I don't know. It's you know, growing up here, I definitely think it hits different. They put low tuning. This, this shit's on the radio, dude. Yeah. This is like it's like my my parents know who Corn is now, and they did it with such swag though. You know what I mean? Like they did Man. it with such style. Like that, I think that's what people love about Corn is that it's like Fuck. fun to listen to. You know, it is like like look at this video. Like if if you know what yeah, I mean? Right. Like if you just replaced the band and then like had this be like a rap video, yeah, you wouldn't question it. You know? Do you want me to throw the? Uh... Yeah, sure. Th- these are my favorite vocals of all time. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. It's so good. Mm. 
Yeah, I mean, dude. <laughs> Like he, Timeless. He screams throughout that that whole fucking part, dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. And this like the slap bass. It's it's everything. It's, it's like each member brings something everything, really cool. Everything that that's. Sorry. Oh fuck. The dance beat kind of. Yeah. Thing. Exactly. But still like heavy. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, the old disco beat. And then David's yeah, they drumming, like, like so good. That's why that's why they're corn, man. They like they they touched on something. Like holy shit, like, everything I felt as a kid, they just. It to me, it's that like it's that California vibe, like mm-hmm. in the '90s. If you yeah. grew up in California in the '90s, I don't even have to explain what that is. But it's a yeah. certain. It's like no matter what what your background was ethnically mm-hmm. or whatever, like you kind of grew up like either liking like hip hop or punk or skating and like it's yeah. like it encapsulate, encapsulates that whole vibe everything into dude. one band you know it, 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 they transcend the music it turned it turn into a culture it's like it, it, essentially speaking it's so hard to do that like to like oh let's encapsulate a whole culture mm-hmm. and then make it a band like that's insane that they were able to accomplish that with this record like insane dude it's awesome I mean so many bands are inspired by by this fucking band, dude. Me, uh, us being one of them, dude. Saw saw that song, fell in love with them, and they they're on tour with Rob Zombie like right after something like that. Oh yeah, to me it seemed like that. That was it. I saw Corn there. That was that changed everything. Oh, and especially seeing them live. That changed everything. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Still, it's the it's it's the. I'm 37 now. I was what 12, 13. I still have the same vision in my head now. Yeah. Following my my dream because of of these guys, and then you, you're you're talking. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk myself up about Suicide but we would not be here without without Corn. Yeah. And take out Suicide Death Chord does not exist. I was going to say, I it feel does, like a lot, it so many exist. modern heavy bands would not exist without the sound that Corn created. Put it down. No, like, it, you know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. like, before them, it was like grunge, thrash metal, and death metal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, there, there was not the variety of sounds that we have now yeah. before them, you know? And they, and they stood for like, I mean, the title of the record, Follow the Leader. And when when, that, when you see that as a kid, and you start your own band, you, you know, say what you want about about SS, but like, you know, we we're always leaders. And yeah. I, I I got it from from them. To do your own thing. Like do yeah. do like do your own thing. No matter what, yeah. It's, they they had they just some something about it, man. There's something very respectable about that, you know. They do your own thing, combine things that don't make sense, have people talk shit on you. People aren't going to like it. Because when the record came out, like, the hardcore scene in Death Metal scene was like, eh, eh. Yeah. Oh, I mean, fuck this. Same, you know, thing, this same thing with, I mean, most new metal bands. Slipknot got like, a lot of hate, too. Like, And now, new metal is, we're finally at a point where, like, new metal gets the respect it deserves. Totally. Which rightfully so, you know. Totally, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. Just do do your own thing. Push the genre as fa- as far as you can. Maximize it. Long mm-hmm. hair, rocking out. Yeah, people Heavy will get it fuck. eventually. Yeah. It takes time sometimes, but people will get it eventually. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Deathcore took all like the behind this uh, behind the scenes, behind the music stuff. That's mm-hmm. what bands these days, for a long time, don't do. They take the sound mm-hmm. or the tuning, but not the energy. But not the energy. Not 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 the attitude. What what created that? You know yeah. what like, what. Who are, who are these guys as people? All they're all leaders. All you they can't just do take this. the riff. It's it's a whole it's a vibe thing. It's it's something you can't explain. You take what's behind the sound and you do your own thing with it. Yeah, and that got straight from corn, man. I mean, that's what inspiration is versus yeah. you know, like I guess plagiarism. You could say, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely. God, corn, you guys are sick. We got we got to get monkey in here, dude. Oh yeah, it's got to happen. Please, coming soon. All right. <laughs> Coming in at number eight is System of a Down, self-titled. Self-titled. Yeah. Sick record. This album changed a lot, too. 1998. Darren is an incredible guitar player. Oh, I yeah, love man. to meet that guy. Yeah. Dude, Sh- shout out Shavo. Dude. Genius, man. Sick. Homie. Awesome dude. Number seven, of course. Yeah. Number seven. Oh, out. yeah. I mean. 99. Yeah. This is Ross Robinson's masterpiece. Oh, yeah. This band, this record is his masterpiece. Yeah. From start to finish, I mean. This is another no skip album. It's so insane. Yeah. This band, that band is as big as they are. I know, They're, right? Yeah. So they have their own culture, you know, like their mm-hmm. own. Yeah. You know what I mean? Across the planet, people like worship this band, and it's like a big part of of their life. You know, it's really cool. Yeah. Really resonated this album. 
with people. Like, I think this album changed a lot for sure. People just felt that like ca- chaotic heaviness with nine fucking people making noise. God, so sick. Crazy. It's like a force like you couldn't ignore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. it's, it's like Garza was saying, it's just doing your own thing. Yeah. I and mean, like owning that. Yeah, dude. You know? This record, man. Great, great memories. Dude, yeah. From fucking Iowa. Just killing it. So good. <laughs> the Iowa boys. Ready to go to the top six? All right, top, top six. six. Let's yeah. see. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah. New York. <laughs> New York, great. I can't, yeah. Dude, Linkin Park. What? I think I... Oh, first, so. first band I got like really, really into, for sure. This is the first band I was obsessed with. Another yeah. band that brought in a whole other wave of, a whole other wave and gen- generation of fans into this, yeah. this heavy For me heavy personally, music. probably my favorite mix of hip hop and metal. Yeah. I think it was the smoothest, you know, mm. the most. Yeah. Yeah. What I thought, Cohesive. I thought it was like cutting edge, just like so slick. Even now, right? Yeah, I feel heavy. like it's st- mm-hmm. it still holds like up. It's still like ahead of its time because yeah, I yeah. haven't heard anyone really mix those two genres in in the way they did. Yeah, you know, that's cool. Mike Shinoda, shout out Mike Shinoda, dude. Yeah, dude, Mike, Mike is a musical dude, Chester. genius. Ah, yeah, Chester, Chester my favorite vocalist yeah. right, of all time. Chester Rest Bennington. in peace, Chester, man. Fuck. Rest in peace. Changed a lot for a lot of people. His screaming, dude, is fucking heavy. It was weird. It's- it's that heavy on all levels, not just sound, his, but like it's his it's specific heavy. scream is so like iconic. Yeah, and no, you notice nobody can, Im- can emulate. Dude. People have yeah. tried. Yeah, it's tough. And it's it's this certain like note that he hits. Yeah, it's like it a pierces real, your ear. It's like a real scream, like yeah. a real holler. That's why I like is that it's more of like a shout scream than it is. It's not a traditional yeah. metal scream. It's not like a technique, like a. Mm-hmm. It's like a real like loud scream. You can feel like the the emotion. Yeah, and the scream. I think that's what what makes it real. All right, let's go top five because I, I got I got a piss. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> White pony. I mean, yeah, White I'm, I'm not gonna argue with that. It's great, great for top five. Okay. Totally. Yeah, I, I listen to yeah. this album I at least once a week. So okay. I agree. Top five. Yeah. Iowa, four. Also, yeah, heaviest record of all time will never be topped. Yeah, oh, super heavy. Iowa is the heaviest record on the planet. It will never with that. Never be topped. Metabolic. Good luck. Dude, there's nasty. some nasty riffs on that album. <laughs> Slip my coast to drop A and like get heavier. Oh my goodness, <laughs> dude. Okay, top three. Here we go. Oh, Lincoln Park got okay. the double. All right. Of course. Yeah. I thought, I mean, it's the best Lincoln Park album, that's for sure. I thought this was going to be number one, TBH. but I, I also listen to this album once a week. But top three. Yeah. yeah it's, it's uh, dude, front to back, no skip. I'm not mad at top three. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> but, but, <laughs> okay. You guys are nervous. You I'm, guys are I'm nervous. I'm sweating, bro. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, toxicity. Oh. Toxicity. Okay. Of course. Yeah, I mean, toxicity is massive. Dude, though. no one's going to argue with that. Yeah. Who's, who? Wait. Wait. <laughs> okay. No what one can, can beat argue these? with that. Which is, what? Wait, there is, one rec- there is one record that... Wait, wasn't it on Top 50? Shit. Wait, wait okay. Well, let me I'm fucking... Think. <laughs> this beer's not helping my, my thought process. <laughs> wait, no, wait. Wait, hold on. What do you guys think was going to be number? What do you? Wait, what's dude, better I'm, than? I'm all? trying to think what what has already been. We just added. went through an amazing list. What can be number oh, one? Okay. You think you know? Oh, there's as far as big album, like there's 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 two records that haven't been, haven't been mentioned yet. And okay. It's okay. 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 My guess. Okay, we, we should place a bet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember. Okay. What it, hasn't been mentioned yet? Okay, so uh, I feel like damn. My my guess is the first corn. Oh okay. Mm. Oh. Yeah, the self-titled, self-titled corn. Boom. They might give okay. it just just because it's like you know it started. It's, it's, it it's, it's literally what started new metal. So they they'll probably give it to them. <clears throat> Life is peachy. It's not on on that. Because you notice they're okay. they kind of stopped mentioning corn for like the top ten. Yeah. Oh. So they got to yeah. save number one. It has to. Yeah, it has to be corn. I would agree with that. Yeah. First corn. Life is peachy's on on there. Oh okay okay okay. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Good. <sighs> Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah, self tight. Yeah, self tight. Of course, man. Be. Started everything. That's a great album. Uh, dude, that's a dark. That's such a dark album. It is, man. Blind. Started I mean. everything, dude. Holy. Imagine if this record didn't exist. Where would, where would mu- music be? It'd be totally different. It'd be so. Because that album broke all the rules. Yeah. It literally broke all the rules of like what music was at that time and what it could be. Oh my goodness, dude. We we gotta get Ross back in here, dude. Yeah, it's gonna happen. 
What a build. This drop is yeah. so... <laughs> and then the guitar, second guitar. Yeah, exactly. Damn, dude. You know what? We should do like a music video like this where it's like, <laughs> it's like kind of like low... VHS style. Like, like VHS style. Mm -hmm. Dude, I'll, I will literally get a VHS camera. That, that's, that's, what, that's what we're doing now. Okay, we're doing it. My favorite band, dude. Dude. They're just... It's right. undeniable. Yeah. That's fucking sick, dude. I'm in that riff, yeah. Legendary. Shout out to Korn. Still the goats. Yeah. I mean, goats are new metal for sure. My 100%. goodness, dude. I wonder what, what people will think out there watching this episode. You know what? <laughs> there, there's a lot There's a lot of, like, bad lists that people put together. I pretty much agree with, like, I had no qualms with that list at all. No? Like, I might have rearranged a couple <laughs> yeah, of them, yeah, but... Yeah, sure. I'm not mad at any of these albums being on mm -hmm. here. I don't, yeah. And you're, you're always biased too because you have like your own favorite bands. Like, obviously, my favorite band is Corn Metal. You know, it should be Corn, Live is Peachy, Far <laughs> All the Corn top, albums. Top five. <laughs> yeah. You fucks. I agree. But with like, this. dude, this top 10 is good. Top, it's, good. it's a good top 10. Even the top, top three, 10, man. to be honest. Even the top, top three, bam, it's like bam, you get everything that. Bam. Linkin Park, Corn, System Move It Down. That's great. Can't argue with that, man. And Bam. Yeah. Okay, four. And Slipknot. Yeah. And Deftone. Five, yeah. So the top five has the top okay, five yeah. new metal that's bands. Good. Yeah. So, I mean, it's that's like... A, good job, Loudwire. It's a good... Uh, they nailed that. Um, they didn't try to go like the, uh, you know, underground route and add like albums that weren't really like... That shit pissed me off. People try to like... I'm trying to make it look cool. They, they give like the hipster opinion. <laughs> uh, they didn't try here. to do that with this, which what I'm the, glad. Put on what the fuck is sick. <laughs> put Can't on the, the albums that people actually liked. What is, what is the Not the weird obscure dude. ones that no one's heard of. Well, we covered a lot of ground. We covered literally <laughs> the whole the whole <laughs> new metal spectrum. So, for for the oh new metal goodness. fans, this one's this episode's for you guys. All right. So. Well, that that was fun. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, everyone, thank you for listening, watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed this new metal rundown. Sorry. Um, next week is us, and then after that, we will have uh, Carcosa, and uh, Torrance back, and we'll have. It'll be pretty much, I think, next week will be our last uh, trifecta for a, a long time. For a while, yeah. Because uh, you see our our calendar invites. It's stacked. It's, it's, it's getting pretty stacky. So get ready to, to have some bands back in here. I'm excited. Pretty stoked. Yeah. Party. So uh, anyways, if you're still listening and watching, put, let me know how Jay's doing. If, he's, if Jay's fucking up, I want to, we, 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 we need to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like man Jay is fucking killing it oh my god shout out Jay in the comments Jay you did, I think I think you're doing a great job man cool thank killing you for it. I mean thank you for uh, <laughs> being here join, joining a team Hell yeah, yeah man I'm stoked you know alright well everyone cheers thank hey, you cheers. try safe out there you guys. be safe later yes. later